All right, another edition here of Krantz's Corner as we uh, get ready for another NFL weekend and the Giants and the Dolphins coming up here. We just had the Dolphins loss against the Bills, so we are getting ready for the Giants now. And my guest now, legend himself, near giant legend, CBS analyst. And for years, I talked to him on the radio, in the morning show with Joe. Phil Sims join us. Phil, thank you very much for your time today. Welcome to Krantz's Corner. Well, good to be on Krantz's Corner. I love the background behind you. I need something like that on my podcast, which I just started yesterday, believe it or not. But did you uh, really? Yeah, I did one with my son, Matt, and we did one, and it just it's, uh, what do you call it, only audio. But next week, we'll have the cameras rolling and all that. Right. Stuff. But it was a lot of fun, you know, because it's what? It's freedom. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Phil, you freedom. got 10 more seconds. You got 10 seconds. Five, <laughs> three, get off. Yeah, <laughs> no one's in your ear. No countdown. That's just how oh, it is. Right. You know it's, it's fun. You're right. No commercial breaks. Nothing. Right. The talk with somebody talking in your ear is really, truly all these years. I still haven't gotten used to it, but that's, that's what it is. So well, it's all good. Listen, it's it's now it's just me. You're going to hear all day and all night uh, long. Right. That's right. My, my voice. Uh, OK, so. Uh, yes. We just got over Dolphins and Bills. Bills had the Finns number. Uh, we were amping up for that game just after, you know, the Dolphins put 70 points on the Denver Broncos. Uh, what'd you get from the game, Dolphins and Bills, this week? Because it started off looking like it's going to be a shootout, 1-1, one, one, you know, score, score, score. And then all of a sudden the Bills took over. Uh, a lot of things. I think the first thing is just emotionally really a hard week for the Miami Dolphins. You know, to score all those points, to get so much attention – my gosh, everybody's talking about it. And it had to be an incredible emotional high for all the players, the coaches, and to come down from that. It's I, I, I can see why it turned it the way it did in Buffalo. And Buffalo is a better defense this year than they were last year. They're faster. They're better at getting to the quarterback. And, um, you know, the offense, you know, I've been a – I don't want to say a – a deterrent or whatever, but with Ken Dorsey up in Buffalo, I've said some things and I thought he did a really good job against the Dolphins defense kind of showed me some stuff I haven't seen. And last but not least, you know, Josh Allen played extremely disciplined and to say he threw the ball. Well, is like, um, I don't know. Uh, it, he, he threw the ball. Great. Yeah. It's hard to beat teams like that when they're emotionally into the game, scared about the Dolphins offense, and knowing it was a big win for him, too, because what would that have put him down? Two and a half games, basically, right. after four weeks in the NFL. It's tough. Yeah, I mean, and that would have been the Dolphins' second win in the AFC East in four weeks, too. And, and that, yeah, right. it would have put the Dolphins way ahead of the pack there also. So now they're at three and one, the Dolphins. Uh, we saw the 70-point game. We saw the game against the Bills, Chargers, and Patriots early in the season. What are your thoughts on the Dolphins Right now, sitting at three and one, Mike McDaniel's offense obviously had that unbelievable week. Actually, week one against the Chargers too. They still put up thirty uh, six points. Too. They're they're putting up massive amounts of points. Last week a little different, but what do you think of Mike McDaniel's offense so far through four weeks? Well, it's 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 awesome. You know, I think Sean McDermott wasn't saying it. It's they're what they're doing is changing the NFL a little bit. Everybody's going to copy it, right? You know, and that's the good. That's it's it's flattering. But it's also bad, too, because always in the NFL, as I said once to Lauren, um, Warren Sapp, the NFL is the fastest adapting organism there is on the, in the world. And, man, you can have it going, but it's like, um, uh, what's a good example? The Baltimore Ravens and their great run offense, the best in history. Well, everybody doesn't have Lamar Jackson, right. but didn't mean they couldn't copy all those other runs. And they right. did, and that kind of hurts it. And you know, Baltimore's trying to make a little bit of a transition and it's working out well. But uh, so this will be interesting. Uh, it didn't change my thoughts about the Miami Dolphins in the long run. And uh, I think the one thing that's been a little disappointing watching them, I think I expected more out of the defense than I've seen so far this year. And that was going to be part two of this. Vic uh, Fangio comes to this team. The D, I mean, the Jalen Ramsey gets hurt. So we haven't seen him yet. Jalen Phillips has been out for a couple of weeks now. Yeah. One of their better pass rushers. But the defense, even through these four weeks, even in that week one against the Chargers, they just haven't looked great yet. They got the good stop, that one big stop in the Chargers game that got them the win, and they played decent since, but not real good. And I thought with Fangio coming here, it would change a lot of things up, but 
It's just hasn't it hasn't clicked yet. Does it click at a, at a certain point? Will Fangio be able to kind of mold it the way it is, or are we going to kind of see this for the next couple of weeks until something happens? Oh, I think it'll click. It's just a question of when. And uh, you know, Jay the Ramsey will be a big part of it. I thought right. what they did against the Chargers when it was really the game was on the line. The Chargers had no answer for the blitz. I mean, yeah. my gosh, they're lining up. I'm watching the game or the tape or whatever. I go, well, I've been out of the league a long time, but hell, I can see a blitz. Mm-hmm. And the Chargers did nothing with it. So I, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was three straight in a row, and the Chargers had no answer. And I go, well, Vic Fangio won that battle. And, you know, because otherwise, if they played it straight, I don't know if they'd have stopped the Chargers from going down and went in and, you know, scoring to win the game. Right. So it's going to get better. I think the pass rush, Jalen Phillips, I had high hopes for him this year. It's early. What What is the uh, prognosis for him? I think that he's going to, they're going to try to play this week coming up. There's no IR or anything, but they're going to try at this point. And, and I know he got hurt in a, you know, a couple of weeks ago, like the Friday before the game and like uh, the last walkthrough or, or whatever it was. And he hasn't been good since, but it, it's a, it was a crazy injury. That's why it's taken this long, I think. You know, I'll say this. His teammate, Greg Rousseau, up there in Buffalo, they were teammates, of course, uh, he's turned the corner a little bit. Right. You know, I kind of look at pass rushers sometimes as, you know, D-type pass. It's it's such an art. And very few guys come in the league and just are instant impacts. They need time to, you know, really to learn to be a pro and rush the passer. In college, oh, my gosh, we got it, – it's pretty easy. But the pros, man, you got to have um, what's the word for it? A library of moves, mm-hmm. or you got to be incredibly quick or over the top powerful. So he's kind of in between all those things. So I, you know, uh, Chubb has looked better. Uh, I like a lot of guys in their defense, and you know, I'll be honest too. I I was really surprised Buffalo's offense was basically almost perfect against Miami's defense. Yeah, that second half Bills offense versus Miami's defense was it was scary to watch as a Dolphin fan to see how they picked them apart. It's scary to think also, by the way, because you brought up a great point. Greg Rousseau on one side and Jalen Phillips on another side of that University of Miami defensive oh. line for that one year. We're talking about two of the best in the game right now or, or up and comers at least at this point. And well, there was them. somebody else there too. Who was the other right. one there? Uh it was a uh, it was a transfer from Temple uh, he was a grad transfer. I forgot his name at this point. It doesn't matter. I just right. was like, he was great. He was a really good college player. Yeah, You're right. I kept looking at it, going, "How the hell did Miami lose all those games? <laughs> <laughs> how, how they not have nine sacks a game? That's exactly oh, what it was." All yeah. right, so Phil, it, it, Tua, you know, is one of the most talked about and polarizing quarterbacks in this league over the last five years since he's been in here. Yeah, uh, when he's healthy, we see what he can do on the field, and staying healthy, obviously is the narrative for him. If he stays healthy, they could do this. And, and I want to know what your thoughts are, because I look at it like this. I, I understand the narrative. Tua has been injured a couple times. He's been out, and you could see what happens when they're out. Okay. But you could say that about every team. If Josh Allen well, gets hurt, the Bills are screwed. Uh, we saw Aaron Rodgers. The Jets, you know, are screwed. You know, like, we've seen that happen. But with Tua, it just seems different the way people talk about him because he's injury prone. Is that the reason why? You know, I don't know. I'll just say this, you know, uh, how he had to play. This is what, his fourth year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I know these years go so quick. But the first two years, the offense he played in had no connection to who he was. And I think all quarterbacks are the prisoner of talent around them and coaching more than ever. And we can have great talents out there. If the system doesn't fit them, and if they don't have some teammates to help along, then we're going to, oh, well, he's just no good and this and that. And a, a little bit of an example, Zach Wilson. I studied him at BYU. I liked him. I, I just That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> but this past week was the first time I thought, this is the guy I saw at BYU. And why? Because it looked like their offense. Let him get way deep and do things. And my answer to all this is that Tua is in the perfect offense because it's all about timing. And, you know, he gets rid of the ball quick and anticipates. Why? Because what choice does he have? Right. Okay. You know, in other words, Tom Brady was great in the pocket. Well, what was he going to do? Scramble? He didn't need to. Right. Yeah. So, Tua has been playing this game his whole life. And I I just give Mike McDaniel a lot of credit for designing an offense. And now he exploits his great traits that he has. Now, literally, it's hard to see anybody – can load it up and throw it faster than him in the NFL. 
And uh, it's been a terrific offense. And like we talked about earlier, people are going to try to copy this more and more. I watched the Indianapolis Colts today because they're playing the Titans, I think, this weekend. So let me study both teams. And the Colts got a little bit of Miami's offense in them, but it's all this stuff so the quarterback can run. Right. And I thought, well, this is really clever what some of the runs are doing. Problem is you can't do as many runs as you can passes. But uh, so even even in the run game, we're seeing some of the, um, I guess, the the morphing away are trying to steal things from the Miami Dolphins and use it in the run game, too, around the league. Yeah, you can see the wrinkles being used everywhere. And that's, like you said, it's it, a big copycat league right there. You know, very few teams can stand there and beat you. Mm. And, you know, I, I would say the Bills are one of the few just because they got this 6'5", Huge dude that can really run and look, come on, let's be honest. It's one of the great, it's one of the best arms I've ever seen in NFL. Oh, yeah. I mean, how about he he's falling back against the Dolphins? Oh, it's a 30 yard throw. Don't let me just hit it. And you just go, (laughs) but he he, let me get one of my pet peeves off, which I did in the podcast. So it two has got great anticipation that works, but when you think arm strength, the people go, Oh, arm strength is overrated. And I just say to you, no, it's not. We just don't talk about it. And how many throws did Josh Allen make in the game? Just I hate to always say him, but many. This is a good example. He makes, he makes five power throws a game that other quarterbacks can't. But we don't say anything about it. it to every, the fan and to the media, which I have many problems with, it's every completion is the same. And what's his quarterback rating? And he, oh, my God. If the quarterback has one turnover, anything in the league, we go, well, he turned the ball over once. Well, the defense gave up super big plays and whatever. We don't – so you, you get where I'm coming from. I do. I do. Man, I know where it, it wears going. me out. I can't even watch TV anymore. <laughs> well, you know, he – you know, he – yeah, he was 30 of 35 with six touchdowns, but, you know, he threw an interception and uh, – oh, my God. Right. Slick. Right. Let's nitpick on the one pick that he threw in the game. That would no, be perfect. It, right. It, it, it's it, I've never seen it. it. The interception or the turnover now is all every game. Right. You know, Parcells, I hate to keep going on about this, but Bill Parcells said all the time, hey, Sims, it's not a game of perfection, you know, and you, when you try to be perfect, you leave too many plays on the field and you got to find the edge. And sometimes, you know, they're not always turnovers. What do you think? There's sometimes it's a takeaway. You just, they hit you so hard. He's something you go, here, take it. I got to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, there's a little bit of both. And I understand right. the turnover thing. And my God, even the coaches after every game, well, we just can't turn the ball over. Well, for the Jets, I'd just say it's third and 25. Can we stop Patrick Mahomes from running for 40 yards? Right, right. That'd be yeah. good. Good but defensive that, that strategy. Right, yeah. right, right. Nobody even brought that up on TV that they no. gave up these huge runs. But that's just me. I know Patrick Mahomes looking like Lamar Jackson out there when he's running the ball like that. Oh, it was, ridiculous. It was, yeah, he, ridiculous, right? Did you hear what he said after the game? No, I didn't. You know, he's such a great dude. And he's he is so a good funny. dude, right? We know he goes, Yeah, when I'm gonna go, I just lean my head and <laughs> 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 you do what he leans his head and takes off. I mean, he he's a funny guy, but well, of course, he's a great talent to say the least. Right, it's good strategy. Lean your head and just go forward. I mean, that's I a good did, strategy. Uh, man, I, I said, is that a key? I should have done that a little more. Right. <laughs> that's it. You should take. You could have back to the future. You could have done that. How disappointing and in, in, up up in, in the in the Northeast right now is if people talking about the Giants because obviously with the Jets, Aaron Rodgers gets hurt. You kind of see where the season might go from there, but with the Giants. Outside of the Saquon Barkley injury, this just looks like a humongous disappointment so far through four games going into week five against the Dolphins. What's the talk up there? I can only imagine what it is up there. Well, whatever you imagine, it's worse. And it's it's national news. Yep. You know, it, it's it's always amazing to me. There's always a group of, especially quarterbacks. What else is everybody going to talk? They talk about the coach and the quarterback. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. But uh, Daniel Jones has been a whipping boy for the national media since he's been in the league. Because we didn't have him in, in our pre-draft evaluation. Oh, okay. And all all this stuff, or whatever. But yeah, he's getting destroyed. And it was a you know, the fumble. And I the the fumble probably bothered me, well, not as much as the interception. I haven't watched the game to real close to see what went wrong on that interception. 
But the fumble, when you run with one hand on the ball in the yeah. NFL, I don't care if you're Adrian Peterson. Somebody is going to get you from behind. And right. so that was a big one. But really the problem, and as we talk, if you don't have at least an average or above average offensive line, it's hard to be gr have great success. And it's just that simple. And, you know, every team's constantly trying to fix their line. And, you know, first rounders are not working out all over the league and they get hurt more than ever because of people falling on them. So that's been, to me, a huge problem for the Giants this year so far. Yeah, outside of about two different years, that's the last 20 years of this Dolphins team trying to find an offensive line. It, or, it, it, that's just been the topic. I feel like every year on the radio, that's what it was. Well, you know what? It's it's harder to get the offensive line together than it is to find a franchise quarterback. I, I think mean, you're right. I think you're. Right. I, I, you know what? That's a point that somebody's that somebody needs to make because I feel oh. like at this point the quarterback. Listen, I know the quarterback's the most important part of the game. I get that, but if, like you just said, if you don't have an offensive line, it doesn't matter who's back there. It's not going to work. No, hey, listen, I'm not picking or saying something nice about myself, but <laughs> I say it all the time. And, you know, I go, hey, what do you expect? The offensive line stinks. How is he going to be good? Well, you know, sometimes you just got to will yourself to make the play. Sure. Oh, right. Yeah, will yourself. Are, is it, are you looking at the NFL now? <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. Uh -huh. The speed, the pass rushers, and all this. And protect the quarterback and hit the quarterback is still, you know, two little simple things to say. I've only seen one team overcome it. And not to quiz you, but it's the Cincinnati Bengals when they huh, went to the Super right. Bowl. Oh, my God. That was a terrible offensive line. You're right. We talked about it all year long, how bad that old line was, and they made the Super Bowl. You're right. Maybe. That that might be the best example. The only other, I, I, If you were going to quiz me, I would say the only other thing I would say was probably in the last 20 years, Peyton Manning, what he did with his offensive line some years, because some years they were just – it was just because he knew he had to get rid of the ball quickly. And obviously it helps when you have Marvin Harrison and Reggie Wayne and Dallas Clark and guys like that, we can get the ball off to and Edger and James running the ball. But yeah, like I can't, you can't even think of an example, but Joe Burrow and that Bengals got that offensive line was bad, real well, bad. Yeah. We did the Super Bowl down in Tampa Bay when Kansas city played Tampa Bay and that old line was beat up and not very good. And what did they do the following year? They reshaped the whole thing. Andy yeah. Reid fixed it right away. And of course, what do you do? He, what have they done lately? Well, they just said let's revamp our whole defense. Right. They've done that. It's 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 unbelievable. I think they have like, I think there's 12 starters on defense now because we all include the nickelback part sure. of it. Eleven of them are draft picks by the Kansas City Ooh. Chiefs. They got eleven draft picks wow. starting for their defense. That's, that's unheard pretty, of. That's pretty good. And yeah. then some of the backups are. So they've done an unbelievable job of drafting. And just a real quick note, I think that Andy Reid, when he got Patrick Mahomes, Sean Payton had said early in the offseason that year, Patrick Mahomes is the best player in college football. And who did he move in front of to get Patrick Mahomes? <laughs> Sean Payton. Nice game of chess there playing those two well, guys. You know right what? There, Don't right? tell people what you think. Right. <laughs> Not until after you draft the guy and you have him secured at that point. Oh, it's so uh, crazy. Bill, it's been great talking to you. I'm going to let you run I'll, on this one. I'm, are, are you sick of yet the Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift? Are you guys going to be talking about Taylor? Are we all going to be talking about Taylor Swift when it comes to all these pregame shows and everything? Because, listen, my wife knows Taylor Swift, and I tried to play a game on her and saying, wow, Travis Kelsey's really helping this girl out. You know, like he's going to really make her a star. And my wife gave me the evil, most Darth Vader evil Star Wars look I've ever seen because she's like, <laughs> are you kidding me? Are you you're joking, right? And I'm like, yeah. no, Travis Kelsey's a superstar. She's she's good, but, you know, and I knew she was going to get me for it. Oh, my gosh. You got, you're, you know what I call that? I don't know whether to call it you're brave or stupid. It's one. It's, 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 it's both. It's both. It's both. Right? Yeah. It's, both, yeah. Right? No, it's a little no. bit of both. Right. That's hey, it. sometimes you got to throw those things out there. You know, that's good. But, you know, hopefully nothing against her. Right. Or him. He's mm -hmm. a great dude. You know, he really is. He, he's awesome. Like when we do the championship games, I'll go on the field. He'll talk. And, you know, he just, he just, it's, it's awesome. He's, he's really good towards everybody sure but i i just i pre-game shows are so limited to begin with <laughs> let's don't spend time talking about anything let's just talk about some football football yeah
I vote for that. I appreciate you coming me on. I love the background. And uh, yeah, I got to get something like that for uh, we'll, my son and I. We'll work on your budget. We'll we'll have yeah, these, okay. we'll have some more Zoom meetings and we'll do that right there. Phil, right. like I said, thank you so much for your time. Love having you here. I'm glad you got on Francis Corner. We'll bring you a guy. I'll bring you on again sooner rather than later. We'll talk about your podcast at uh, that point also with your son. That'll be that'll be fun uh, to to listen to and watch once you get the cameras and everything ready for that. Yeah, but thank good. you. You know, yeah, I get to go on there and you know I talk, but I get to get my um, what's the word for it? My pet peeves out. Get it all out. Just just oh this is it's a good therapy session. That's what it is. It, it really point. is. Right. And it it's is. cheap. It's, you don't have to pay for the therapy either. It's free therapy. <laughs> Just get a good mic and you're good to go. Oh, oh you're God. awesome. You, look, if you talk Bill. to Joe Rose, is Joe still is Joe yeah. still doing morning stuff? I just I I am now just the digital Francis Corner guy now. Well, you know, tell Joe, I guess he lost my number. I mean, you know, I don't know. Last time he brought me on was the draft before Tua, Tua was coming out. And I was saying, take, you know, Justin Herbert. Right. And I guess when I got off the radio, the Miami fans had a good time. They were crushing me. <laughs> of course, Justin I knew that would happen. Right. <laughs> what are you thinking, Phil? What are you thinking? Oh, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league right yeah, now. He's good. Hey, All listen, right. Tua's doing pretty good himself. So I I'll take it. Right. It's I'll take it. Out. All Phil, right, man. Well, thanks thanks man. again. Thanks All for right. coming on Crancis Corner. Thanks for talking some ball with me. All right. My pleasure. All right. Phil Sims joining us here on Crancis Corner.